from Athens, Texas. In RBTA Studios, deep in the Texan RV park. Featuring Todd Henson and Tony Flamio. It's the Beard and Bun Show. Welcome, Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Beard and Bun Show. And today, it's just me and Todd at the beginning. Uh, we have a special guest later on in the show. Curtis Coleman from Our Village right. is going to be with us. And we're going to have a heartwarming conversation. It's going to be awesome. And then we're going to hit each other with some pies. So it's going to be a messy show. I think probably the messiest show we have <laughs> so far. So I'm win. But <laughs> we're all about science, right? We're all about teaching. Yes. So you're probably wondering, why yes. do we have all this toilet paper on the table? Well, we have... Camco RV Marine Toilet Tissue, also known as the stuff that disappears instantly. Campa Soft Two-Ply Toilet Tissue, and we have Scott Rapid Dissolving Toilet Tissue. And what we're going to do is Todd and I are going to have a little competition, and it's called Wipe It or Wear It. So we have one shot at wiping off some chocolate sauce, some pecani sauce, and some Oh my God, runny cream cheese. So you get That's one- That's cottage cheese. <laughs> Thank God, because if that I'm was glad cream this cheese- is a science show. What we're gonna do what's is- What's the goal? Um, we have to flip a coin. Does anybody have a coin? I can flip this. Oh, I found, I saw a penny. Is that a penny? There's a penny right here. Penny or a quarter? I don't have All a All right, coin. so we're gonna flip a coin. Heads, or, a heads or tails? Yes. Heads or tails? Heads. heads? It's tails, so I get to pick first. I'm gonna go with the Scott Rapid Dissolving. All right. Because I'm just... Do I get one of those or do I have to do it with my bare hand? Uh, no, you get to choose now which ah. one. Uh, you have oh. Camco RV Toilet Mar Marine, and you get two squares. You Oop, chose the crap. Scots. That's not fair, I need to get a full two squares. Not a square to spare. I missed. You're gonna go for the Camco? I missed twice. Come on, Thunder Thumbs. Got it. Okay. Hold on. Oh, I'm holding. So the idea is, is we're gonna go for a wipe, okay? <laughs> this isn't supposed to represent anything. It's just a brown line of chocolate sauce. So you get two squares. No cheating. There you go. All right, hold on. Now we. You want to compare? It? Mine's uh, ridged. Okay, that's that's. Well, that's awful thin. Wow. Don't get it damp. It just completely disintegrates. All right. Yeah, the Scots will let you know it's there. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the wipe test. We we're gonna do, find out. We don't want to do chocolate first. Let's do which, chocolate last. You want to do chocolate? I'll oh. do chocolate last. Okay. I'm telling you. What do you want to do first? All right, we'll just that. Yeah, we'll do hot sauce. Hot sauce. Picante. So the idea is, is on one swipe without lifting up, you got to get the most off. All right. Come on, fingers. All right here we go. So one. Oh God. Then what? You said ah. without lifting up. Okay. <laughs> it's it's already disintegrated. It did. All right, and our judges, Mel. Your wife. Yeah. It's, it's Curtis, it's, which, it's melting off your hand. Oh my god, look at this. Yeah. I'm not gonna hand. say what this looks like. All right. So uh, what, unfortunately, what, okay. Todd, you own the paste pecani sauce. Sweet. I'll take this home. Oh no, it's okay. It's called yeah. salsa, by the way. It's salsa. actually chunky salsa. So am I gonna eat it? I like oh, you're gonna wear it. Here we go. Oh, Coming on you. Oh man! <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> oh, there will be reparations. I know. Wow. I, I, can, I already know I'm gonna lose what? the. Uh... Chocolate sauce is coming in. Okay, <laughs> cottage cheese is next. <laughs> Where'd that coin go? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. I know it. Uh, what did I put in my pocket? You're lucky you wore the red shirt. That's all I. Did. How did I, uh, how did I lose the coin already? All right, cap up or cap down? Uh, up. Cap up. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Which, uh, which? I'm going Scots. <laughs> going Scots. Here you go. I'm gonna try a new one here. I'm gonna do the Campasoft. 
see how good this one does. Ooh, this actually feels nice. Oh God, it's almost translucent. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Your hands are already wet, Todd. <laughs> yeah, I need to. Already dissolving. This is like. Uh, oh goodness sakes. This is all for science. This is for you guys. So far, the Scott's Rapid Dissolving is the way to go. I don't think I'm gonna do good on this one. This Camposoft is... Oh, I'm so ready. Very thin. All right, God, he's gonna kill me. <laughs> all right, this is the... Uh... <laughs> There's nothing here. <laughs> all right, you know, I was just kidding. We don't have to do this. <laughs> are we doing this? Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Get it. Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, yeah. Who won that one? Todd. Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Waited 50 years for this. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more because I can't open this. <laughs> Oh, that's so oh. runny. That's so runny. I'm going to do it slow like you did. Oh, damn it. Oh, that's so gross. That's so gross. You're not coming home tonight. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it literally feels like so God, that is so gross. You should see your shoes. <laughs> okay. Um, moving on. Chocolate um, stuff. Uh, there's uh, <laughs> hey, Tony, what happened to your head? <laughs> I feel like a, a big bird just took a dump on my head. Okay, so far, Scott's has won two times. Uh, all right, <laughs> so I guess you go back to choosing. It's cold, no, uh, up or down? Ah, up, up. Oh, she's got the coin. I had the coin. It's up. Going with the Scots. Going with the Scots. All right, I'm gonna, Aww. I guess I'm gonna go with the, the Camco. This stuff here, uh, the <laughs> Camposoft, is, um, is extremely thin. I got one and, a, one and three quarter sheets. All right, um, hold on a second. Oh, golly. Now you know what your butt feels like. <laughs> All right, Camco, RV Marine. Oh, this stuff is even thinner. You made it sound like it was amazing. When did I say that? <laughs> well, okay, well, it's a little better. So this stuff is a little, th so far the Scots is the way to go. Um, this is really, this stinks. <laughs> you smell this. <laughs> I, I, I want to dip some chips on you, but this, I don't know what you, okay, ready? Yes. All right, chocolate sauce, chocolate right? Chocolate sauce, here we go. One wipe, oh, come on. Oh, eh, I, eh. What do you think, judges? <laughs> judges? Can you get a second wipe? No. I can. 50-50? It, it, it really is. I think it's 50-50. Now, now you just double wipe. Oh, because I can. Can you look at your hands? Mine it's been done like, before. I have a hunchback. Of oh, God. Oh, you ever had so, oh, it went down my pants. Oh, it went you down. ever had that happen before? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm like, why even wipe it off? All right. Okay, I, I don't even know what to say about what you Well, no, no, she's doing it. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm slipping around. I knew I, knew I wasn't going to. All right, come on over here. Well, let me get, let me go in the middle. So we, we lost, huh? It's definitely 50. Oh, my God. Just put it I all on him. No, I don't want to step right on that pile. All right. I'll give it oh, to you. Man. Oh, oh, God. Oh, that oh, feels good. Chocolate sauce. Oh, that was more Oh, I want to rub that in. Yeah. Send your head for it. I don't want to. 
Oh god. No! <laughs> There's so, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, so, no, that's enough. What the heck? Why do we do this? What is this down here? All right, so. What, <laughs> what have we learned here today? Don't come um, on the show. <laughs> oh, my God. So, talk to my agent. <laughs> here, here's what we've learned. Campus Soft, um, it's a little thin, and uh, I think you can get it on the second wipe. The Campco RV, uh, RV Marine toilet tissue, that stuff is basically just uh, used sandpaper. I mean, it's, uh, very it's fine disappearing. Grit. Yeah. It's disappearing, yeah. Last time I got a piece of is when I used that stuff. I can't think we could say that. <laughs> <laughs> so the winner, Scott's Rapid Dissolving. Uh, I'm just sliding into cottage. first place. <laughs> yeah, sliding into first place. It's <laughs> Scott's. Um, yeah, I, I'm done. I, I'm oh. covered in stuff. I need to go over to the shower. I need to so, go. yeah. Uh, stay tuned. We have Curtis Coleman coming up. We love you. We'll see you in a minute. We got to get cleaned up. Todd cannot be there. handle. Uh, my intros, but you know what? I don't What's care. up, it's everybody? A, you know, you got to put the P in the W. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome back. Today we have an amazing guest. He's a good friend of mine. We go back quite a few years, and I'm so glad he was able to fly out and see us. We have Curtis Coleman, the original founder, the creator of the R Village app. That's right, the app that everybody uses instead of Facebook because it's better for RVers. You're able to, <laughs> what's so funny? You're able to Why find Why did you say other. this stuff when I was building it? Why, well, you know. Get our 12 subscribers to join. <laughs> the thing like, is, dude, is, late. I needed dude, that help late. back then. No, it's good. It's Backstory, he was recently sold uh, our village. No, no, we became partners with. Became partners with. with. Sorry. Yes. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, that's why he's saying, why didn't you say that then? Well, we were saying it then. It's just we didn't have much of a following to say it to, so we would go home and tell our wife and kids, and you should go on our village. It was a really great. It is a really great app. I don't want to say was, uh, where you can find people. If you're if you pull into, let's say, the Texan RV park in Athens, Texas people that are in the park will be notified if you want to that hey one of the R villagers just approached uh, the RV park and, and you can go visit and stuff. Or There's the flip side which is even cooler is not that it's like you're there and then you get notified that other people have yep. arrived in that's, the area. That's what it is for mine. And yeah. so yeah. rather than then other people get that. That's kind of creepy when I think that other people are going to get notified that I've arrived. Oh, but yeah. it's way when There's, you think about it that you opportunity to think of. Whoa, somebody arrived. That, then, that's what I meant to yeah. say. Yeah. So totally botched that up, but that's okay. <laughs> that's what we do here at the Beard and Bun Show. Yes. The beard, uh, the bun, oh, nice. the botch. The beard, that's bun, my and job. The, botch. Yeah. yeah. So today, Curtis Coleman, I wanted to bring you on because over the years I, I've I've had the opportunity to listen to you a lot and you tell a lot of amazing words. stories you have a lot of words yeah i do with age come wisdom and my friend it's the way you i have a lot you, of wisdom you have a lot of wisdom no, I'm just, that's that's <laughs> horrible we've probably we've, we should probably cut that but we won't probably not um so curtis tell us how in the world and I don't want to say late in your life, but it, it didn't seem like this was something you started earlier on. This seemed like a like a secondary adventure of yours. How how did you come Maybe about? Sure. Yeah, yeah. How did how did that happen? How did you just stop and go? Hey, uh, I think I'm going to create a cool app. Well, I bought my first RV in 1992, so I'd been doing the whole RV thing for a long time, and I've had, you know, travel trailers and. Class C's and Class A's and different RVs. I kind of worked my way up, and then I had my bus, which uh, I bought in 2009. And uh, I had done a couple of different iterations of uh, full timing. So prior to 2009, I had a career as a musician, and I used my RV to travel. You know, I was, uh, uh, would use that. And I would go on tour with people, but I didn't like being in the bus with 12 people, so mm -hmm. I had my own. And okay. I would do that, and that's, I kind of love this feeling of having my own home on my back. And then fast forward, I, I had in the early 2000s, I full-timed for a couple of years, and then I started full-timing in 2009 again, and I was married at the time. 
my, uh, went through the death of both of my parents mm -hmm. within 18 months of each other. And during that period, my ex-wife and I, we were doing this together, we decided to split up, but it wasn't a bad split. There mm -hmm. were no enemies here. We were, she's one of my best friends, and we talk all the time. But what happened was is I found myself uh, in the bus and RVing alone. And I realized that RVing is a social sport. It's like if I'm sitting at a restaurant and somebody says, hey, we just bought a new RV behind me, my head's going to, I'm going to snap my neck turning around so fast, <laughs> right? Because it's like, what a horrible way it's to go. well, no, but it's, it's, it's <laughs> such an interesting thing that we have in common, you know, yeah. and it's a social thing. But when you're doing it, it can also be a very lonely thing. That's the dichotomy, is that you're bouncing around from place to place for short periods of time, and it's hard to forge long-term deep yeah. relationships with yeah. people that you're meeting for five minutes and then leaving. And that was a problem for me because human interaction was very important to me in my life, as I think it is for most people. I think it's a very stimulating part of being alive is the friends that we have in the community that we create. And so missing that was, I, I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning and was at Santa Fe Skies RV Resort in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and was sitting outside looking at all the rigs, and th I thought, who are these people? And I wonder if there's a website that I can go on and that I don't know about. And I went online and started looking for it, and there was nothing. There was forums mm -hmm. where you could talk about a subject, but there was no way that I could meet people by the location that I was in. And I thought oh, this is crazy that this doesn't exist. And then I did some investigating and uh, found out that I would actually have to lose my mind in order to create this. So I decided that was a fair trade. Sure. So I lost my mind <laughs> and I created it and, uh, and then spent the next uh, eight years with my face in a computer. In also creating the largest network of RVers. It, 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 it has been growing like crazy and um, and I think the reason for that, you know, I, 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 I want to be funny, but I got to be serious also for a minute, okay. which is hard for me to do. I want to be funny, but I, <laughs> it's not in the cards. I know. Okay, so let's be serious now. All right, here we go. So, why is social media so powerful? Like, why is Facebook so big, and why is Twitter so big, and why are these things so big? It depends on how deep you want to go. I know. My personal belief is, is big because deep. that's yeah. how we learn about things now. We don't learn about them from reading a magazine. We learn about them from each other. So if I'm interested in buying a horse, I'm going to go on Facebook and join a horse owners group mm. and find out from other people who own a horse what the pitfalls are and what the good things are what and where to find a good is. one and yeah, yeah, and what to feed them and all that stuff. So we now learn from each other. So what I thought our village was going to be was a place for people to meet each other it turned out to be something very different. It turned out to be this place that people went online to get information from each other. It's much, it's, the people are meeting each other through it, mm -hmm. but really the power of it are the groups and the information that people get from each other. There's just tens and hundreds of thousands of threads about every subject matter you can possibly think of regarding to our being. So yeah. that's my long answer. No, that's, that, that's good. Um, the short answer, it was fun, it was fun to build. It, I, I don't buy that for a second. <laughs> it was. It was fun to build? Yeah, I mean, it was. It was. It, it, I don't have any hair left, but it was, but yeah, there were, yeah. It was, okay. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I tried. I, I got to meet you guys. Well, you know, okay, I'll have to hand that to Mel you. Mel makes That's, me laugh. Yeah, she does. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you were on the road as a musician. I right. was. I was a. I, I was. That's, I, that's all I did from the minute I came out of the womb. I, I my, my, I used to get my mom's pots and pans and make a drum set in the kitchen, and okay, how play music. How many of the R villagers actually know that? Like, I, I, I honestly, I didn't know until the R Village rally a mm -hmm. few years ago. Um, you said that you may come up and play a song, and I was like, what? Yeah, and I was running sound, and literally you came up and played it. And I, it was such a sad song. I don't know if the words were sad, but it was like minor key, just feeling. It was a feeling song. Feeling song. song. And I, I was, I felt myself getting a little emotional because you were opening this thing that you could tell was so important to you, 
And I don't know if you knew that if that was going to be your last. That was the last one. I know. And I did so, not know that. So how many our villagers do you think know that you have this musical background that is actually bigger than? Well, I think all of them that were at the rally. Well, at that point, yeah, yeah I guess yeah, at that point. And, <laughs> um, so that makes I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know that, you know, that what I did before is that important to people. So I don't know the answer to that question. Well, being a musician, it was it was important to me. Because uh, just as the RV is a community, you know, right. the musicians have community as well. Right. You know, it's it's hard to, um, to sometimes be able to talk. The same way. Well, so I, that was my career, and it was for my whole life up until 2005, which is 16 years ago. Wow. Or 17 years ago, when I stopped playing music. And I stopped for a very specific reason, and it's because I got throat cancer. And um, if you can, I don't know if the camera can see it, but I have a scar under here. I had radiation and big surgery. They did what they call a radical neck dissection, and they did a... a chemotherapy and all that stuff. And the same, uh, anybody that knows John Prine, he had the same cancer I had. Except he continued to sing because he really forced himself to do it. And he had the kind of a voice where nobody really cared, right? And for me, um, it took, it was just too hard for me to kind of relearn how to sing because I was using different muscles. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, like when you're in the car and you just sing along to a song? I used to do that in life, like I could just open my mouth and just sing. And now, in order to keep it from just flying all over the place, I got to pay really close attention, and I'm lazy. And it just, it was too hard for me, and I was just like, I think I'd just rather reinvent myself. And so I started doing things that I had never done before. Um, the first thing I did was I, uh, I decided I wanted to open a restaurant, build a restaurant from scratch. And everybody kept looking at me going, can you do that? Like, do you know how to run a restaurant? And my sound bite was, well, I just beat cancer. How hard can a restaurant be? Yeah. Well, I've now owned a restaurant. The sound bite now is, I've owned a restaurant. How hard can cancer be? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> do not ever do this. If you're ever thinking about building a restaurant, this is the hardest work I've ever done <laughs> in my life. But I learned a lot about being an employer and, uh, and you know, b and building something and, and having responsibility to something other than myself, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and then it just kind of morphed. I did real estate and stuff. And then, so when I found myself at that RV park, thinking about maybe doing this, um, it was an easier conversation to have because I had already built a couple of things before. So it was um, it was like I I'd almost lived my whole life for that moment, but I didn't realize it until it happened. If that makes sense. Yeah. Sometimes it takes. And so steps. it's like, yeah, yeah. So it's like stopping singing. It's like the person who goes blind, but their hearing gets accentuated. So stopping singing, I stopped doing that and focusing completely on that, and then other parts of my brain started working, but not overly. Like I'm not some kind of savant or anything like that. Singing and music was never hard for me. It was just it, I was resting on my laurels, right? It was like oh, I can do this and make a living. And I don't have to go to school and learn how to do something. Mm -hmm. Sign me up. And so I did that for as long as I could do it. And then God, the universe, great mystery, said, oh, you need to find your voice. So we'll do that by taking away your voice. This one, if that makes any sense. Makes perfect sense to me. Cause, right. And it was like, I guarantee you that if anybody were to say to me, um, what was a big turning point in your life? I could say it was when I had cancer. Now, there's two stories. One is, oh my God, I have cancer. This is terrible. You know, people die. That's true. And then the other one is, oh my God, I have cancer. This is awesome. I, I get to learn and be alive and be a, awake in this moment to learn something new. And that's true, too. This one brings suffering. This one brings joy. Choose. So it was that's after that point that you actually decided to start developing this, this project, the Art Village yeah. project. Yeah, and then I did it. 
and then I, I, I put together a team of people who know how to do this because I didn't know how to do any of it. I just knew that I knew kind of what I wanted it to look like as an RVer mm -hmm. and what I wanted it to do. And oh my God, was it just horrible. Like <laughs> people were like, God, I really like, I want to like this thing so bad, <laughs> but I just don't because it's just so wonky. And it was like building a social network is hard. Yeah. There's nothing easy about it. And um, it's just a rat's nest of code, and it's just a very difficult thing to build from scratch. But, um, but we were up for the challenge because we knew that it was needed. People needed, they wanted to meet each other. You know, wanna, you go I ahead. I want to circle back on yeah. something that you said because you, you, you made the statement that, you know, you have to choose, you know, and I think that's very salient for. Uh, a lot of people getting into the RV space. Now, a lot of us, we get in, you know, we have this dream. I, I want to get away from the house. We have others who may have been no choice, lost a job, whatever it may be, and they find themselves in an RV. And it's the same thing, you know, I've, n n not on the same level by any means, cancer, going to an RV, but, you know, you're, you're faced with these struggles and you have to look at it, the perspective, you've got two choices, you know, is to continue to hold on to the things that you once had and, and uh, long for them, or you know, look at this as, okay, well, we, we have some challenges ahead of us, and the only way we're gonna get through this is with the right attitude and with, you know, um, I guess, a, you know, an outlook that makes us get beyond the obstacles that we have. And I think uh, for a lot of our viewers, as though we may not have cancer, but we can still, on a, on a much lesser level, still look at the same thing and understand that, you know, there's a, there's a perspective here that we should not lose um, in anything that we do, and that is to, you know, take it, take life by the horns, you know, take it and just, you know, think positive with it and just attack it versus long for stuff that you lost. I couldn't agree more. I'm going to add to that, and here's what I'm going to add. It is not lost on me that anybody who is in the process of buying an RV, this is akin to getting married, having a child, buying your first home. That's the way it was for me. That's the way it was for every single person that I know. This was not an extracurricular thing they thought of one day. They spent a year going to mm -hmm. places and looking at them and finding the right one and being in this conversation and, oh my God, the night we got our first RV and had it delivered and it was in the driveway and we were in there all night with the buttons and inviting the neighbors over for a glass of wine and maybe even driving it to a restaurant and then back just so they could take a ride in it. It's a big deal mm -hmm. because what it is, back to your point, is it's making that decision that I'm going to live my life on purpose not by accident. I'm not going to just do it because the job has me living here or has me going down the street every day to work. This is going to be something that's going to be for my adventure, or my experience, and my kids, and my relationship, or me alone. And, and it's a big deal. And I think it's that way for everyone. Nobody just slips Very into good. an RV like they do buying a car. Yeah. So, you know, and that's, that's the whole point of what you guys do with NRVTA, you know, and making sure that people, that they can go a, l a little bit deeper into understanding and become one with this machine that, it, that gives them the freedom to be able to do the things they want to do. Right. Yeah. Try and take away the handcuffs because yeah. all the problems. Right. Woo! Exactly. This is getting serious. Wow, it's heavy yeah. stuff. But yes, the idea that I always had was that I'd much rather build an ocean that can float many boats rather than try to be a boat having a part of the ocean, right? So like at- A stream. A stream, right? So like, at, at, it, was, it was less important for me to build my brand and compete with clubs or whatever. I'd much rather build a space where all the clubs and people could come in and tell each other about what they do. Hmm. And we do that already in our life in the biggest places, we just don't realize it. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. You can go onto Google and you can say, I want to see a video of somebody changing a light bulb in an F-250 truck. And Google will serve you up Vimeos if it's relevant, even though they own YouTube. They don't say, oh, we're not going to show you those. 
if they're most relevant, it's going to come up because that's why you go on Google is to search mm -hmm. for things you want a search engine that brings you everything, not just what they want to bring you. Does that make sense? It does. And so I've always felt that um, the urban, RV industry has been a little bit difficult in, every, in everybody playing well together and realizing that they're more of a benefit for each other than they are a competitor. Yeah. If that makes sense. And that's a vision that I would love to see. Uh, and I think, I think our village has done that pretty well, you know, as, as well as anybody could. We've always been open for everybody to have a home there, you know, a place that they can talk about what they do. All right. What do you want to talk about to close with? you want any, anything you're working on, anything you, that you're doing? Mm. Well, I think the most interesting thing for me is that I'm, I'm retired now and I'm, uh, I'm now, I don't, I'm not working at our village. I, I, uh, uh, I went into retirement in, uh, in, at the end of July of last year. And it's been a, I miss, I miss people. I miss the constant conversation. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to get back into music. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to build a little studio and. A big studio. A big studio. And I'm going to, uh. I'm going to play music again because like I got into RVing and I wanted a, a way to live my life on purpose, that's what's calling me right now. And um, I'm probably personally going to do a little bit less RVing if I can say that I'm not, not promoting the RV lifestyle. I mean, my God, I've built a social <laughs> well, network. Well, I think at this it. point uh, you're, you're good. Yeah, yeah. but, but I, think, a face for that. I think that um, uh, I think the what I'm really interested in doing is having time to create. I like the whole creative thing of, of making something new out of nothing. And music is something that I really love doing. And now I want to do it not so I can make a living at it, but so I can really enjoy it. So you know? start as a musician, yep. lost your voice, yep. had to rebuild yourself, yep. rebuilt yourself, yep. And now you're going back to what you love, but you're able to do it as as a as a labor of love. Right. I'm going to build a studio, unless I don't. That's a good good way to live by. <laughs> we're going to finish the segment. Or not, unless you don't. Exactly. We're, we're, we're going to finish the segment, unless we don't. Okay. Exactly. So. We could just talk all afternoon. I mean, they'll listen. It could be interesting. They may. Well, coming up next, we have Pie in the Eye, where Todd and Curtis are going to go head-to-head -to -head well, with win this some time. trivia questions. <laughs> no, oh, you're okay. not. <laughs> trivia questions? I'll do that. Do we, have, do we really have tri trivia questions? We, yes. They're, they're, and they're just They're ridiculous questions. questions. Yeah. I love it. It's ridiculous. It you is. won't know the answers. It's going to be right. a lucky guess. Whoever the luckiest. Stay tuned. <laughs> should know how to fix this. Babe! You should know how to fix this too. Babe! You should really know how to fix this. Babe! But he doesn't. I'm the tech in this relationship. Hey! I'm coming. Guys, the RV industry has never been more popular than it is right now. And it's never been so understaffed. We need thousands of technicians and inspectors just like you. Click the link below to learn more and get your future started today. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Beer and Bud Show. And we've reached that segment that everybody loves called Pie in the Eye. And that's where I answer I answer I ask a few trivia questions and if you get it right great if you get it wrong you get a pie in the eye today we have Curtis Coleman and Todd Henson going head to head how many of you guys think you're gonna get wrong <laughs> all right any more whipped cream is pretty good question number oh trust me you're probably gonna get some so don't worry about it <laughs> just open your mouth when she <laughs> just open your mouth when she right. when she whacks okay in Florida only on Sundays it is illegal. It's illegal for a single woman to do what? 
Karaoke or skydive? In, Kurtz. in Florida, in, only on Sundays. Only on Sundays. It is illegal for a woman. Single woman. A single woman. To do what? Karaoke or skydive? I'm going with uh, skydive. Karaoke. It is Skydive is correct. Todd, I told you. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just you always pick. I don't think it ever should be ever. illegal for a woman to do karaoke. That makes no sense whatsoever. Nobody in their right mind. Right, Skydiving, maybe. I'll take it. I feel nervous. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't put the cloth down. Why do you feel nervous? I would have done that like. Moving on. Too hard? No. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> Oh, everybody, right. Melissa Flamia, my be beautiful, beautiful game, wife, man. the uh, deliverer of pies. After the last one, I said I want to be the pie grower. Yes. Johnny Depp is famously afraid of what? Pies. The dark or clowns? Todd, you go first. Clowns. I would say clowns also. And the answer is clowns. He is famously afraid of clowns. Yeah, he's kind of a dark guy, so I don't think he'd be afraid of himself. In <laughs> <laughs> In California, you legally cannot buy a mousetrap without having a permit or a hunting license. Curtis, in California, you can't legally buy a mousetrap without having a permit or a hunting license. I would say a hunting license. Todd? I play it safe. I can choose the same answer. And either we both get pies or we don't. You said hunting? I did. I'll go with permit. The correct answer is a hunting license. <laughs> Pie gonna... in the eye. Pie in the eye. Who knew I knew so much about trivia? Yeah. Oh, you were scared crapless just a second ago. <laughs> I've never had a pie in my face before. Maybe I should oh, no. First. Well, okay. Todd? I may, I, I may have to do it. Here we go. Oh, she's so he gentle. Does it so well. Well, it's Not on my good. nose. <laughs> Yeah. yeah I go up. You don't have I'm to sure. smear it in. I didn't. <laughs> you need the windshield wipers. There you go. Okay. Oh. This is good. This is good. Okay. I'm sure, it's good for you. The next question. It is illegal to do what in French vineyards? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Ask me. <laughs> Ask me how I know. It's illegal to do what in French vineyards? Pick the grapes or land a flying saucer? Todd, you're up first. Pick the grapes. <laughs> Curtis? I would say... This is I'm going to say land a flying saucer. I bet it is illegal to land any kind of a flying vehicle into a vineyard in France. Well, with age comes wisdom, and the answer is land a <laughs> flying saucer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not illegal to pick grapes? It, I don't no, know. It, it may illegal. be, but not on this trivia question. You know what? I'll bet the question was that it is illegal to land any kind of an aircraft into a... Look, into land a flying saucer. I get it. So... Flying saucer, it, 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 who, is, who am I to decide that aliens yeah, this is fake are, are excluded from that? That's right. All right, Todd. All right. Todd did three for three, man. Oh, oh God. God, that's so <laughs> thick. Oh, God. How many more of these do we have to go? Uh, well, we got to get you eventually. <laughs> no, I, know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, really, this just keeps going till I get a pie? Well, I got all day. <laughs> apparently, we may have to. Jeez. All right, the next trivia question. Comprastophobia is the fear of what? Com what is it? Spell it. Con cop oh, sorry. Coprastophobia. C-O-P-R-A-S-T-A-S-T-A-P-H-O-B-I-A. Coprastophobia is the fear of what? Contrasting color or constipation? Ooh. Well, we know which answer I'm going to pick. Well, Todd, you're up. Nope. Constipation. <laughs> I can't the, not choose that. Con, oh. Contrast in color or con con known con as ohms. constipation. Coprastophobia is the fear of what? I'm going to go with the color thing. Well, it is constipation, my friend. Oh, no. Pie oh, in the eye. Yeah. Pie oh, in I'm going to get this one much faster. She never let me down. Oh, she's putting extras on there. Oh, because that other stuff is already spoiled. Uh, I needed to get oh, God. Let me back up a little bit. Don't look at me. I'm ready. 
Ta -da! Oh! No. She leaves it on there. It's oh. hard to come up. You... That is good. Wait, why not? There, there you, oh, well, that one's full now, so okay. we probably want to get one. you another one. This is good. That was good. Here, here hey, go. last time we had big towels, but, you know, since there's mm. inflation. <laughs> Shrinkflation. Oh, no. We oh, no. That's all right. Towels. In my pants. That's okay. Yeah. Well, you are covered in good night. That's all right. All okay. right. Final question. Been to a few of these parties. How many teeth does an aardvark have? Twelve. This is this this is you got to guess how many teeth? Hard bar I'm gonna say zero. I didn't know. I'm just gonna... They have none. Wow! Got it. Change my. Mind. All right, I get pied. Pie in the eye. I get pied. pied. Wait, you don't have to add What's more. Who, I want to know. Question? I want to know who came up with the idea of the pie. Um. Whose idea was this? The guy who doesn't play. The guy, guy, who, doesn't doesn't take, <laughs> guy who doesn't take part. Well, how does that work? Yeah, I know. Here, do you want to give it to him? No, he's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm covered I'm in. I knew, um, I knew I was getting All right. Ready? All right. Yeah. Oh, don't boy. look at me. It makes me sad. This one's going to throw. Wait. No, give, give, her, <laughs> give, her, oh, give her a sad. Like, give her the saddest. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Oh, oh got it. Yeah, that that one was juiced, man. That one. That, that one was yeah. juiced. All right, everybody. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I need what? some towel or something. Uh, well, you got, here's another one yeah, right here. Just There's reached out. Towel. Everybody, well, thank you for towel. watching you. the Beard and Bun Show. And now you know exactly what uh, uh, toilet paper to use. <laughs> you know how many teeth an aardvark has. You just got to keep coming back. So thanks. For, share this video, like this video, and go to rvmattress.com forward slash NRVTA to get 20% off your RV mattress.